Even today, with the skies filled with drones, helicopters and planes, UFOs are still a source of mystery and intrigue. Imagine then the level of disbelief on seeing such objects before the actual invention of the airplane. Whilst we might think of the UFO as a 20th century phenomenon, the late 19th century saw many astounding reports that brought to those who witnessed them both wonderment and fear in equal measure. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three mysterious UFO encounters before the invention of the aeroplane. Mystery Airships, 1896-1897 Almost a decade before the Wright brothers' first flight, numerous sightings of strange, cigar-shaped UFOs were spotted across the United States. Starting in 1896 and continuing to 1897, these mystery airships were bigger and faster than anything else known at that time. The first sighting was reported in the winter of 1896. A light was seen slowly moving through the Sacramento night sky on November 17th, with otherworldly sounds being heard as it passed overhead. The mystery light reappeared on the evening of November 21st, and then subsequently seen over more than half a dozen cities including San Francisco and Oakland and viewed by hundreds of witnesses. Not long after, more unidentified airships would be seen. On the outskirts of Springfield, Missouri, one was seen having crash-landed to the ground. It was 20 feet in length, 8 feet in diameter and propelled by three giant propellers. An on-the-spot witness approached the ship and came across its two pilots. They looked human. However, their language was nothing of this world. They attempted with difficulty to communicate, trying to ascertain the pilot's origins. Eventually, they both pointed upwards and apparently uttered something that sounded like the word Mars, before quickly returning to their airship and launching high into the sky, leaving witnesses completely mystified below. These unidentified objects would also be the first reported stories of alien abduction. The first occurred in April 1897 and involved another mystery airship hovering over a farmer's cattle pen. Upon closer examination, onlookers realized that a cable from the airship had roped up a cow, but was struggling to break free, having become entangled in the pen's fence. The group unsuccessfully tried to free the cow, but the fence itself was torn out of the ground, leaving the ship, cow, and part of the fence all rising slowly into the air and sail off into the sky. Interestingly enough, the airships weren't just after livestock, they tried to take people as well. It was on November the 19th, 1896, two days after the first mystery airship sighting over Sacramento. A US Colonel, H.G. Shaw, was driving his buggy through the countryside near Stockton when he came across what appeared to be a landed airship. Shaw described it as having pointed ends and a silver exterior without any features aside from a rudder for steering. The ship was about 150 feet end-to-end, -end, 25 foot in diameter. Suddenly, to Colonel Shaw's amazement, three slender, seven-foot-tall extraterrestrials exited the craft, all emitting a strange warbling noise. The beings reportedly examined Shaw's buggy before attending to Shaw himself, deciding to physically force him into their craft. Luckily, the stocky, well-built soldier was physically superior to the thin, lanky beings, and the aliens soon gave up, fleeing back to their ship and quickly speeding out of sight, leaving Colonel Shaw baffled below. Aurora, Texas UFO Incident It was almost dawn on April 17, 1897, when inhabitants of a rural American town saw a single alien spacecraft lose control over the skies of Texas. A young boy saw an airship trailing smoke as it headed north toward the town of Aurora, slowing and speeding as it tried to regain control over its trajectory. It sailed over the public square, reaching the northern part of the town where it clipped the edge of a windmill at speed, then veering into the path of the town's water tower where, upon contact, blew into a number of pieces, large and small, in a terrific explosion, scattering debris over several acres of ground and awakening many of the town's residents. The residents that awoke went to investigate the source of their early wake-up call. What they found would astound and stupefy the townspeople. Having read about numerous mystery airships in national newspapers recently, 
including an abduction attempt, they wondered if this was something not only extraterrestrial, but also nefarious in nature. On locating the ship's sole occupant, although the pilot was dead and disfigured from the crash, they soon realized that he was clearly not an inhabitant of this world. Furthermore, strange markings in the manner of hieroglyphic characters were seen on the internal control panel. Terrified of the unknown, the townspeople hurriedly buried the body in the local cemetery, and removing the wreckage in the hope that the incident would disappear from the town's history. But that would not be the end of this. Some decades later, an investigative reporter wanted to find out once and for all all the facts behind this extraterrestrial cover-up. The investigator began with trying to locate the remains of the spacecraft itself. One Aurora resident interviewed claimed the whole thing was a fabrication, maintaining there had never been a windmill for the craft to collide with in that town. It turns out there was no windmill to be seen, however, further investigations revealed the remains of a windmill base were found. Was this Aurora resident still continuing the cover-up all these years after? More was added to the mystery as the nearby site of the old windmill was a deep well. A sweep of the well would reveal metals in the water itself, some elements such as aluminium and silver, but others that were unidentifiable in this planet's periodic table. Could this water well be where the spacecraft's parts had been dumped back in 1897? The presence of metals surprised the well's owner, however he disclosed that having started using the well, he began to feel pains in his joints, and soon diagnosed with early onset arthritis that could be associated with contaminated water. With the location of the spacecraft possibly found, the investigator moved to locate the extraterrestrial pilot. He went to the Aurora Cemetery, and ground-penetrating radar and photos from prior visits brought to light an unmarked grave in an area near other burials from the 1890s. He discovered a grave marker and headstone that seemed to show a spacecraft of some sort, as well as faint readings from his metal detector again. This was surely the conclusive evidence he was looking for. After putting the pieces together, the investigator returned to the town, looking to ask for permission from the cemetery association to perform an exhumation, and to conduct a more major operation of retrieving the spacecraft's pieces from the well. Not only did the cemetery association refuse his request, but upon returning to the site to take photos, not only had the grave marker mysteriously disappeared, but the metal readings now showed nothing. Returning to the well, the investigator had a feeling he knew what he'd find. The metal detector now also didn't pick up anything either. The UFO landing in Aurora, Texas would remain an unexplained mystery. Jose Bonilla Observation On the 12th and 13th of August 1883, an astronomer at a small observatory in Mexico made an extraordinary observation. While observing sunspot activity, Jose Bonilla saw around a legion of objects, each surrounded by a vapour passing across the face of the sun. He was able to take a few photographs, exposing the photographic plates at around one hundredth of a second, a particularly fast shutter speed for something so far away. These would come to be the earliest photos of an unidentified flying object. There were many suggestions on what these flying objects could be. Bonilla himself never actually put forward his own explanation and a few years later, the journal in which Bonilla's photos were published, something far more straightforward was suggested. This included things like migrating animals, or even insects. Others have gone on to suggest that the objects were extraterrestrial in nature, and in their shapes, flight approach and numbers could well have been an army of alien craft. What scientists eventually came to surmise, however, was something far more terrifying, an extinction event in totality for all life on this planet. Scientists estimate that the objects ranged in size from 50 to 800 meters and were breakaways from a large parent meteor. That parent comet was around the same size as Halley's Comet, weighing well over a billion tons. Not only that, but the objects were around 600 kilometers to 8,000 kilometers away from colliding with Earth. In astronomical terms, this is equivalent to a bullet grazing your head so close it shaves off some of your hair. So, if a collision had occurred, what would have been the result for us? Bonilla observed these objects for about three and a half hours over two days. There was an average of 131 objects per hour, and a total of 3,275 objects in the time between observations. So, if they had collided with Earth, 
we would have had 3,275 Tunguska events in two days. The Tunguska event refers to a huge explosion caused by a meteoroid impact in northern Russia. It flattened an estimated 80 million trees over 830 square miles, with its power around three times that of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. Clearly, one of those impact events is bad enough, but over 3,000 all within a couple of days, that is one visit from outer space that planet Earth is happy to have missed. But what do you make of these interesting accounts? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.